Today I want to share an unboxing with you of beef bones that I recently purchased online and arrived today. And these are the bones that I use to make my beef bone broth. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest. I'm a former New York City girl, now living the simple life with my sweet husband here in the Texas Hill Country. This channel is all about cooking from scratch, living naturally, and creating a cozy home with charming thrift store finds. So if you're like me and you want to live the simple life, be sure to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Many of you have asked me, Mary, where do you get your beef bones that you make beef bone broth with? And as I've shared in some of my previous videos, sometimes I find them at my local grocery store, sometimes at specialty grocery stores, and sometimes I get them from local ranchers who sell at our farmer's market, especially since I live here in the Texas Hill Country, there's a number of ranchers who sell bones at our local farmer's market. And sometimes I like to buy them online. And one of the places that I really like to buy my bones from online is a company called U.S. Wellness Meats. And that's where this box came from. My favorite time to buy bones from U.S. Wellness Meats online is when they have a sale. And they often have a lot of sales. And the most important thing to do is if you're interested in ordering from them is to sign up for their email. When I signed up for their email, I would get an email every week. They don't inundate you, but they send one every week and you won't mind because in it, often is a coupon code for 15% off your order. Or if it's not a, a, an entire 15% off your whole order, they'll have a coupon code or um, alert you to sales of specific things on their website. So I just wanted to make sure that if you do visit U.S. Wellness Meats and decide to order the, from them, that you definitely sign up for those emails because I think it's a really wonderful savings. And I generally wait until I get an email from them with a coupon code for 15% off to put in a nice big order. And the reason I like ordering from them is because all of their meats are grass-fed and organic. So you really can't go wrong. It's really the cream of the crop. And if you can get it during a sale, then it's the best of both worlds. Well, let me open up this box and I'll show you what I ordered. Now, if you order from them, the first thing you're going to see when you open your box is a little thank you note and on the back lists what you ordered. And then here they have uh, something about the delivery, something about thawing tips, and then something about cooking tips. And they just got everything there and it's very nice and handy information. And the next thing they include in the box is a little catalog that lists everything that they sell. And this is nice and handy. Certainly you can look at everything on the website, but the nice thing is you can also have a hard copy to look through as well. And another nice thing about U.S. Wellness Meats is that if you put in a minimum order of $75 and seven pounds, it's free shipping. So that with a 15% off coupon code, you really can't go wrong. And I'll be sure to put a link in the description below that'll take you right to their website. And I'd also be interested in hearing in the comments if you've ordered from U.S. Wellness Meats and what you've thought about them. And also, are there other places that you order beef bones or beef or whatever the case may be in terms of meats, chickens, and whatnot online? Because I'm always interested in learning about other places as well. Now this is heavy, but I'm going to try to lift it up to show you. It does come packed in a styrofoam cooler and everything is frozen, whether it's steaks or bones or whatever the case may be, everything is frozen and it's also packed in dry ice. They really send it packed beautifully. Alrighty, well I called in the cavalry to get that out of the box. <laughs> but now you can see this wonderful cooler that it comes in. And I save these. These are terrific. Because if we go to the farmer's market or we go shopping, you know, especially uh, living in Central Texas, our summers can sometimes be really hot. And having these are so handy and you don't have to worry about uh, buying an actual, you know, those heavy duty plastic coolers. These work great. And it's a way to reuse something that might otherwise have been thrown out. Well, this is taped up beautifully and I'm just going to very carefully take my scissors and split the tape so I can get the top off. Oh, and two other things that I wanted to mention was that when you go to the U.S. Wellness Meats site, be sure to check their bulk discounts because say you want to order, I forget exactly because it, it varies from item to item, but say six packages of marrow bones or eight packages of marrow bones, whatever the case may be, they give bulk discounts. So that's another way to reduce the cost as well. And then second, they also give a $25 discount if you order over a certain weight. And again, I don't remember the exact poundage. It may be 40 pounds, something in that range. 
but if you are doing a nice big bulk order and you have an extra freezer and you want to order a lot of bones, that's another way to take advantage of uh, making this a little more affordable. And speaking of keeping things affordable, don't forget, you can reuse your bones. They're not just going to get one pass to make bone broth and then you're done. And I have a video which I'll link to in the iCards and I'll also put it in the description below called Perpetual Bone Broth. And you can get multiple batches out of one set of bones, especially if in that set of bones you've included maybe one oxtail or a few neck bones, bones that are very high in cartilage. Then you make your bone broth for 12 hours in your slow cooker or on your stovetop, whatever way you make it, and then you add more water and you start all over again. And if you're using those bones that have a lot of cartilage, you should be able to get a second batch, a third batch. I'm going through the process right now and I'm gonna do follow-ups to my perpetual bone broth video to see how long I can go to continue to get a nice gelatinous bone broth. And as I've shared with you in the past, I have friends that are like food bloggers and other YouTubers who have told me that they've gotten 12 plus I don't know about that, that just seems amazing to me. But 12 plus batches of gelatinous bone broth out of one set of bones. I think right now I'm on my fourth batch, so, but I'll have to give you an update on that. But remember, you can at least, I think, get two to three batches of high quality bone broth, especially if you make sure that you're using something more than just marrow bones, using your uh, oxtails or your neck bones. And hopefully that will help to make making beef bone broth more affordable. Because I know people can get concerned, oh, the bones are a little expensive and this, that, and the other thing, which is interesting. Years ago, the butcher would just give you a bag for free, <laughs> but not anymore. But I do think that making multiple batches makes it affordable, and what you make at home is gonna be so much better than anything, I, in my humble opinion, anything that you can buy at the store. Let's see what goodies we have in here. Alrighty, well as you see, it comes wrapped in a beautiful bag that will contain all of the frozen meats as well as some dry ice. And I'll just take the scissors and I'll cut, it's taped, and I'll open this up. And then once I open up this silver bag, inside it's covered with paper. Now I'm just gonna remove this paper, and actually what they have in here, sometimes they have dry ice, I mentioned that earlier, and here they're just having some nice cold uh, ice packs. And this is good too, because I can save these. So not only do I have a cooler, I have reusable ice packs. I'm all set for the summer. And look at this magnificent bounty of bones. <laughs> I think I have a lot of beef bone broth in my future. Now we'll unpack everything and I'll show you what I got. And if you're interested in learning more about specific bones and what role they play in terms of making bone broth, be sure to check out my video, which I'll put in the iCards uh, I cards <laughs> above and the description below uh, that explains all the different, uh, the different types of bones that you can use to make bone broth. Well, I'll start taking out all these bones and show you what I ordered, but I also wanted to let you know that I have a video which I'll link to in the iCards and I'll also put a link in the description below where I go over all the different types of bones that are available for making bone broth and why I pick some over others and what my favorites are and which make the most gelatinous bone broth and so on and so forth. So be sure to check out that video. So the first bone that I want to show you is a knuckle bone. This is wonderful for making bone broth. And these were on sale, so I was very happy. And this has a little meat, a little bone, a little cartilage, a little fat. It's got a little bit of everything. And it's perfect for making bone broth. And now the next thing I have are marrow bones. I love these. They, these are the medium marrow bones. And then these are the long marrow bones. They also make short marrow bones, which are about an inch thick. But I have some of those in my freezer right now so I didn't order any. Those are wonderful. The short little ones are wonderful for roasting because the marrow gets nice and caramelized and then is very tasty to scoop out and put on a little piece of toast or something. Now you can also roast these and do the same thing and push the marrow out and eat it as well. But I really like the medium sized ones and the long sized ones for making bone broth. And the reason I get different sizes often has to do with what they have in stock or what the sale might be 
or what the bulk discount may be. It's, it's not that I'm particular to having one or the other uh, in my, my bone broth. It's really just a matter of what I can buy and so on and so forth, what's on sale, etc. And sometimes I do like having the medium-sized ones as opposed to the big long ones is because depending on what type of bones I'm using in my bone broth, these sometimes can be a little easier to fit in the, in the slow cooker. And if you use a, a pressure cooker like an Instant Pot or a Mealthy, something like that to make your bone broth, the medium ones might work very well because I believe the little vessel that goes into the pressure cooker is a little smaller and you make a little less bone broth than you can in a slow cooker. At least my slow cooker is a nice big one. So I can easily fit the long bones in. But just in the event that you have one of those smaller pressure cookers, these medium marrow bones are very handy. And another cooler pack. So, so far I have the long marrow bones, the medium marrow bones, and the knuckle bones. And I wanted to mention, I generally always buy neck bones from them too, but last time I got a good buy on neck bones, so I bought a whole bunch and I've got them in my back freezer, so I didn't get any neck bones in this order. But they're one of my favorites for making a nice, affordable, gelatinous bone broth. And then this next bone that I got is called a patella bone. Sometimes it'll be labeled just patella, other times it'll be labeled a patella femur bone. And basically what it is is the kneecap and then part of the thigh bone. And I go over all of this in more detail in that video that I mentioned earlier where I talk about all the different types of beef bones that you can use to make bone broth. But this patella uh, or patella femur is wonderful for making bone broth and it makes a wonderful gelatinous bone broth. I'm not sure if you can see through the plastic, the reason why these patellas or patella femurs make such wonderful uh, gelatinous bone broth is given that it's the kneecap, it's loaded with cartilage. And it's the cartilage that then when it's cooked in the acidulated water, you know, adding some vinegar or some wine or whatever the case may be, it pulls out all the collagen from that cartilage because the cartilage is loaded with collagen and really helps to make a delightful gelatinous broth. And you know how much I love gelatinous broth. Now the next bones that I got were oxtails. And if you've seen some of my other beef bone uh, videos, you know that I always call this my insurance policy. I love oxtails. If you put these in bone broth, um, beef bone broth, you're almost guaranteed that you're gonna get a nice gelatinous broth. And the reason is, is that this bone uh, in the tail, the, the oxtail is, is, as the name implies, the tail, uh, is very rich in cartilage. And so again, when it's in the acidulated water and it's cooking, it really releases a lot of collagen to make the bone broth gelatinous. And what I like about oxtails is they also, as some of, some of the other bones that I mentioned, they have a little bit of everything. You can brown them up so you've got the meat that'll brown and give a nice flavor and a nice color to your bone broth. They've got some fat, then they've got a lot of cartilage. So they're a little bit of everything. And something that you'll notice when you use oxtails in your bone broth, when you defrost these, you're going to see that this bone in the middle, some of it is actually soft. You can actually move it around. You, you, the cartilage is actually soft and you know that's gonna make a gelatinous bone broth. And the final bone I ordered were the beef osobuco. They're beef shanks and they're wonderful in bone broth. And the reason is you can brown these in the oven and then add them to your vessel that you're making your bone broth in, whether it's on the stovetop, a slow cooker or a pressure cooker, and deglaze the pan in which you roast the bones and add that to whatever vessel that you're using so that you get this wonderful flavor, wonderful color, and after it's been cooked in the bone broth, or after it's been used to make the bone broth, it's a wonderful flavored meat. It's tender, just falling off the bone, and it's delightful to enjoy as a meal. And something I wanna share with you, and I'm gonna give this a try. Someone left me a very interesting comment on one of my beef bone broth videos, and he or she said that what they do is they put whatever bones they're using to make their bone broth into a dry slow cooker and then they put it on high and let the bones brown right in the slow cooker. And then they add their water and whatever acid they're using, their wine or their vinegar or so on and so forth and proceed with making their bone broth that way. So it saves them the step of browning them in the oven and deglazing the pan. I found that fascinating. I've never tried it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Anything to you know, make a little shortcut seems worth it. But that I wanted to share that with you. And if you've done this, done that or tried it, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. 
If you'd like to learn more about beef bones and bone broth, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to make beef bone broth from start to finish. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.